The following is the documentation of traditional building in northern Ghana. Construction will take place in the town of Zare, which is between Bogatanga and Narongo in the Upper East area of Ghana. These kinds of traditional compound structures have been in existence for hundreds if not thousands of years. This tradition is slowly being replaced by the growing prestige of Western style architecture. This is the compound of the Inaba family. There are several structures in an extended family compound, which includes an outdoor cooking area and personal spaces. The interior is a cool retreat from the hot sun of the day and a dry place during the rainy season. Structures are often painted after the rainy season. Because of the labor-intensive quality of this, oftentimes buildings are left unpainted for several years. For this video, we are building a traditional woman's room. This will be a round structure with a flat roof. The building on the far left was built nine years ago and recently repainted. The first step of construction was the removal of an older wall built with adobe bricks made of locally dug materials. These bricks are then broken up and reused for the new building. Water is carried in by the women from the nearby well to reconstitute the old bricks. This is a community project with everyone helping out. The building material is made up almost entirely of coarse silica, with surprisingly little clay. As the men mix the material, the women sing and dance to keep the workers' spirits high. The process of building creates a sense of community and a cultural bond while passing on important traditions to the next generation. Construction requires a coordinated labor force, but while this is a community effort, it is the responsibility of the builder to make sure that the walls are well formed. <laughs> builder Sobila Atote, age 34, forms the walls of the structure using only a stick. He has been building for four years. He is continuing this tradition of building from his father and his brother. He is also a blacksmith and a farmer. It's the first layer. Uh, and uh, by tomorrow or tomorrow next, the second and the third layer uh, will be put on top. 
and we hope to get about five uh, to eight layers before the room will be completed. So the top of it has to be flat? Yes. Then tomorrow. No. It's the only one we have. Oh, no. Everyone works together to supply the builder with compressed balls of building material, which he presses into place. He uses no equipment or tools of measurement to create perfectly round and tapered walls. The first layer took about two hours to complete. The following layers are added until the desired height is obtained. One layer is added in the morning and the second layer in mid to late afternoon. Each layer is approximately 12 inches high. After 10 to 12 hours, it shrinks down to about 10 inches. Because of the lack of mortar, these structures are stronger and last longer than adobe brick structures, but is far more labor intensive. This method is used throughout Africa, especially northern regions of Togo and Nigeria, and throughout Burkina Faso and Mali. This is about the sixth layer, and um, we are now doing the opening. If we don't do it at this time, then it will be so hard and difficult that it will take us a lot of time uh, to, to open it. Uh, you, here you have the builder or the architect uh, doing the opening itself. The traditional small opening was created as a form of protection from the sun, rain, and intruders. As a woman's birthing room, it is also a visual metaphor for a womb. Later, a new entrance will replace a destroyed wall and small chicken coops added to create a more stable wall design. A grinding area and stairs will complete the enclosed compound area. Only hours after the eighth layer was completed, we experienced six hours of heavy rain but by morning, little damage was noticeable. These men are experienced roofers. Six main beams will support the roof. Each beam is carefully placed on a stone with temporary supports until secured. A gradual slope is needed for drainage. A stick is used to check the slope of the main beams. This area of Ghana is not as forested as the Ashanti regions to the south. Wood is the largest material expense of the project. 
These hardwoods are very difficult to cut, but provides the needed strength for the four to six inches of adobe material that will be laid on top. Flat roofs may serve many purposes, including a sleeping area, which takes advantage of cool evening breezes and provides an amazing view of the stars at night. The wood is carefully placed to create a strong support. This project is not without innovations. Plastic is being used as an experimental dust barrier to prevent roof materials from being pushed through. After the roof is completed, another layer is added to the edge to create a low wall around the roof area. The metal pot is removed for ventilation and replaced by an inverted clay pot with a hole on the side to allow for air circulation but to block rain. After the roof is completed, the outer wall will be extended by one layer and a draining hole added. The exterior pipe allows for the water to drain away from the main structure. When the timber supports are removed, the men's work is finished, and the women's servicing work begins. The plaster used is a finer version of the wall material mixed with cow dung. All the work is done by hand. The surfaces of the structure, both exterior and interior, are burnished for smoothness. Designs were discussed and agreed upon before work began. The women came together to think of recent designs used in the community and agreed upon some particular indigenous designs, which are more traditional. The lines on the wall refers to an African woman with beads around her waist. After the walls are burnished, a red stone rich in iron is ground and mixed with water and cow dung for painting.
Cow dung is added throughout each layer, creating a water resistant surface. Pegale, which is a white stone, is natural chalk. Kumsamla, a black stone, and Zygmolia is also used for red. Many of the abstract designs refer to solidarity and togetherness. Ayamga Anaba is 84 years old and the matriarch of the Anaba family. She is also a potter. Many of the women are also potters. They have been working together for the last three to four days plastering and painting the structures. Surface designs include local animals, such as snakes, chickens, lizards, and scorpions.
Just as I said outside, this is what a typical African woman should have in her room. Uh, here you have uh, the whole set of bulls, and each bull has something uh, to perform. You have this, this is called pivot. And this is a bull. And this is Zambi Eduko. And uh, when you look at it uh, with the pilko, you can open it. When you open it, uh, there is always dry meat, okra, uh, dawa dawa inside this one. And anytime your in law comes, or your, your daughter is married to somebody and he's visiting, he's visiting the house, you have to pick these things, the dry meat, the dawa dawa, and the okra from this to cook for that person. And here you have, um, uh, you store your food stuff, like millet and uh, flour. And here you, you have it, the same thing here. You have what a woman should have. And when you look at it, there are a number of holes here because you are keeping uh, something inside. You want air to be passing through so that uh, uh, the, the, what is inside will not be molded. And uh, you have a whole lot of it here. You should have a basket where you put uh, uh, some of your materials and your room that one is always in the room where you sweep your room after every morning when you are up and what we have here is a whole set of calabashes uh, and all the calabashes the woman needs like uh, calabashes for tz when a stranger comes calabashes for making fly water when uh, you you are from the farm you want to drink fly water they are calabashes then here you have um, uh, this is called tusunko uh, you put in your hair whatever you want to carry you carry that and when you look at the whole thing this one is called zanga in gruni uh, it's just as i said it comprises for several types and different types of calabashes uh, in uh, the, lo the locality. The woman has been united. They have been there for over two, three, four years. And this is uh, the community work they have been doing. Uh, we are grateful to the university and actually to Mampo and the husband, Mr. Martins, who have come to uh, actually uh, help this woman to do such a wonderful job. We are, we are grateful to the university.